Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com backslash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with a fired up Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to ask that you stop rebooting the 1980s. Yes, please. And if you're going to do it, at least be respectful. Yes. Of the source material. Better yet, just make your own damn things. Make your own damn things. So before we get into it, please subscribe if you have not done so already. It helps the channel, guys. Uh, thank you so much for that. So Geeky was talking about she-ra today because right. there's there's been a push for more she-ra right because you know everybody else has to just get over it you know when they wanted their original she-ra right. but now they want more after they got how dare they how dare they uh, because whenever people pointed out that this was not the original she-ra they got told that they were all kinds of names and how dare they it's their turn now well theirs is over yeah so wah wah and wah. guess what they when they're celebrating she-ra now they're using the classic one yeah, I just want to put this out there. It is the 35th anniversary of Shira at PowerCon this year. They're bringing out, and and uh, Geeky is very excited. They're bringing out a brushable hair mm -hmm. Shira doll, retro Shira doll, and they're also you know bringing back the Masters of the Universe, classic yeah. Masters of the Universe. Uh, I don't see Noel Stevenson's Shira anywhere on any of the nope, promotional. It's the material. anniversary, and they're using classic Shira. Right. So that does that does give us some indication of which version of She-Ra will probably last longer. In oh, the we all know which version of She-Ra will last longer. And if my, if my, my other comment is with the stuff, if the stuff was so garbage, so terrible, so, you know, one dimensional, so bullshit, why the hell are they so hot to reboot every damn thing from the 80s instead of making up their own stuff? We're going to talk about that because this is a this is a bigger conversation than just Shira. Now there's a call for uh, Gem and the Holograms. Right. Someone asked me about this on Twitter just yesterday, actually, or the day before about this, too. And I have I have some thoughts. So we'll talk about that. Then I, I want to talk about why it seems like everybody's going back to the 80s, including people who were not alive during the 1980s. Like this stuff means nothing to you. It really doesn't. So what you do is you take the name, you take the basic concept, and then you change it all uh, to be current year, but you lose a lot of the original fans in the process of it. And the reason people keep going back to the 1980s kind of reminds me of Ready Player One, where it seemed like we reached peak pop culture in the 1980s, and now it's just a record on repeat. Right, pretty much. You know, and again, we keep... Make your own damn stuff. Make your own stuff. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of this. Sorry, I'm distracted by the bracelets on Kimber because I remember when I was a kid, we used to do that with the jelly bracelets. Oh, the jelly bracelets. Where you'd link the two together, usually in different colors. Um, and then you'd, you'd make a bigger bracelet on your wrist. Um, but that was back, you know, because I was there. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so the parent, you know, was it was on comic book resource, I think com resources, right? Yeah, well, they had, yeah, comic book resources. I saw this about one couple, the other day. A couple days ago. They, again, why are they digging up the Gem and the Holograms comic, the IDW comic, which ended three years ago and frankly didn't sell that well? Now, disclaimer, I do like Sophie Campbell's art quite a bit, mm -hmm. but the comic really didn't sell all that well. And now all of a sudden, everybody's talking about it again. Right, because now that the She Rescue attention, we have to go do Gem and the Holograms according to Princess Weeks, which you know my opinion of most of the stuff she says. Anyway, so she goes on about how, because now that um, she and the Princesses of Power has come to an end, I ended up rereading one of my favorite comic series, Gem and the Holograms from IEW, and she goes on about how, what Gem was, and how we have to do a new show of it. Um, and then she even says, scroll down here, I love this, keep going down, because after she goes this whole thing about how we need to, you know, like, you know, it was much like she -Ra and how they took existing queerness and diversity and elevated it. No, they went and put, inserted a bunch of things in there that weren't there, just insert them. But go ahead, because don't you know, diversity is simply lesbians as far as these people are concerned. And I'm going to call it. Yeah, they talk about Kimber and Stormer. And I, this is the same thing with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, where if you watch those episodes, they were clearly just girlfriends, it, there was but not, not 
girlfriend. Yes, exactly. Plus, Stormer was my favorite character. Always was my favorite character. Had the doll, because I was there. And Kimber used to annoy the flip out of me because she was an annoying, whiny little brat. And that she used to annoy me. I mean, you did you did uh, Stormer a little bit of an injustice with pairing up with Kimber. Anyway, um, but when you go down... What's wrong? No, I was just thinking, if I recall correctly, uh, Kimber had boyfriends on. Yeah, she did all the time. Uh, she was very popular with the dudes. But I love this one. I love this. I didn't grab with Jem, obviously. I did. But since I first watched the show, I've been obsessed with it. And it's unexplored potential. I love the show, but let me tell you everything that's changed about it. I have the complete series. So do I. I have the Funko Pops. Oh, God. I had the dolls. I even listened to a lot of the songs. Yep, me too. And, when, and true story, when we got the DVDs back when it came out and they released the DVDs, and it was a big, big deal and you couldn't find them and the sets were going for a shit ton of money because everybody wanted them and you couldn't get them. When we watched the videos and watched the episodes, what did I do when Tame Song came on? Sing it. And I knew all the words, even though it had been years since I saw it as a child. I knew the words to all the damn songs because I had the tapes when I was a kid that came with the dolls. And I used to listen to them over and over again. I even went and entered the song contest. There was a contest where you could sing, call a number, and sing the theme song. And they're looking for a winner. I even entered that as a child. I didn't say I was good at it, but I entered it. <laughs> I imagine you probably would have been pretty good at it. Now, what gets me, though, is like, remember tapes? Like, I don't, I don't think any of these people who are uh, fantasizing about growing up in the 80s who weren't actually there. Thank you, Stranger Things, uh, for that, by the way. But, uh, yeah, tapes. We had tapes. We had songs on tapes. tapes. And I remember seeing the dolls in the store, and they all came with their they own did. little tape. Yeah. And you listened yeah. to the songs, and they had songs on it, the theme song, and then another song or two from the show with a doll. I think it's like one other song and the theme song. And I had many a cassette. I knew the words. So my comment is, if, you get, if, if knowing the stuff gives you something, some kind of more cred to 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 be able to say whether you should or shouldn't reboot it uh my cred is way higher than your cred but beyond that i love this you know i nominate gem as the 80s product to reboot i nominate how no because i am so flipping tired of everybody just rebooting everything from the 80s here's an idea make something new stop pissing on the 80s stuff and my next thing is if you love it so much why change it for one. My other thing is, if you hate Boomer so much, why the fuck do you keep trying to reboot all the shows from the 80s made by Boomers? I mean, seriously, are you that creatively bankrupt that you have to go and do this? You know, you know here's the thing. Rebecca Sugar did uh, Steven Universe, okay? And she went and brought a bunch of diversity, a bunch of originality, a bunch of new things. And she did it from nothing. It was her own thing. She didn't reboot something and have to use the name of something else to elevate her. She did it first. Y'all want to take credit? Y'all want to jump on there and outdo her now? But I'll give her respect. Like it or not, it was her own damn thing. It was original. She didn't have to shit on somebody else to elevate herself. She didn't have to get uncomfortable names to elevate herself. She actually was creative enough to think of something new that happened to be diverse and brought it to the forefront of discussion. Fast forward all this shit. All it is is banking on a fan base and an established property made by somebody else, but loved by other people, so that you can use that already existing base, the name recognition, to sit on and change. I'm sorry, that is pathetic and sad and has, you know, it, it's as your hand in it. You worked for nothing. Give her, I'll give Rebecca Sugar credit because she at least did something new and did it herself and didn't rely on fans like me and the years we kept it alive to take it and take a diet shit on it. Anyway, what were you going to say? I, I don't know if I can follow that up. Uh, no, but this is the thing. This is what it, it's so frustrating again you look at like oh it's got a fan base it's got yeah. style it, it's, we can totally yeah. totally make it's this got the fan base so we can reboot it because it already has a fan base make your own damn fan base exactly why you turn the volume down i should give people a volume warning when you do this video make sure you put a volume warning i'll on put it. a i'll put a rant incoming warning mm -hmm. I, this is just you know again we see this i, I want to talk about this in another video at some point in the next couple days about the difference between uh, Japanese franchises and American franchises and the difference between Japanese work ethic and what I'm seeing in America, which is, you know, their heroes, the people they look up to, the characters that they create for their young people and Shonen Jump, whatever, they have to work. They have to work for it. Even if they're handed a quote unquote mantle, like My Hero Academia, they have to work for it. But 
these people who come into these existing franchises in the U.S., they expect to be handed the franchise, handed the fan base, and then they cry when the fan base doesn't like that you've changed everything. Remember when they put the gem movie out? Yeah. It did shit because they tried to change things and people hated it. They hated it. I mean, honestly, the only way I think you could do gem at this point is actually set the damn thing in the 1980s because there's so much of it that is so... I think product of its time. Product of its time. I mean, you need MTV. You need you right. know, all that. And that doesn't exist now. And you know what? You know, here's the, the kicker, too. Um, when they go on about, you know, the, oh, they're based on toy lines. Because guess what? There was a toy line with Jem. When they go on about that, how is that any different? They're using toy lines to help accelerate and build a fan base. They made these shows to promote toys and the toys promoted the show and vice versa. How is that any damn different than using an established fan base to then just, you know, take, to use it to, to promote your own version? That is no different. When you sit there and bitch about, well, they don't have, we don't have a toy line we have to answer to. No, but you have a fan base you have to flip an answer to. It's the exact same damn thing. Yeah, they don't. Uh, again, it's just people who don't want to actually work their way from the ground up. Uh, they want something. They want a seat that's warmed for them. Uh, and this is why you see a lot of times in comics, you see people come into a situation with a comic book series, a superhero, whatever, and a lot of times they'll hand the mantle off to somebody else just because they were there. You know, and it's that attitude. This is why we can never get past the 1980s because, frankly, a lot of people aren't ready to get past 1980s the stuff that was created in the 1980s came from people who were raised in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. you know and they had a lot of that uh diy attitude well i'll tell you what the reason they can't get past the 80s is because there hasn't been a decade that replicated it no because i'm gonna be frank with you i've been alive all this time so i i, I know what i'm talking about no other decade has come up with the amount of creativity and imagination and fashion forwardness and everything of the 80s so that's why it's always duplicated because it's not replicated but often tried to be duplicated imitated yeah imitated poorly because nothing it, it was was a time of you know exploration of creativity of um you know imagination and i'm sorry people that are trying to do this now uh, lack all the above hell they even tried to do this once before with gem it was called hannah flipping montana yeah, they already right. tried to reboot it once and they got it hannah montana i mean it wasn't directly but you could tell they got a lot of it from gem i mean at least they tried to make it something different but you could tell it was inspired by it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were so many things in the 19. I mean, again, you look at, you know, Spielberg and George Lucas and, uh, you know, all of the shows that came out back then. And it just feels like we're on, we're reliving a mixtape over and over and over and over again. Even Stranger Things, like as cool as it is, pretty much every scene in that show, you can point to a Spielberg movie yep. or another TV show and say, oh, they got this from this movie. They got or even that commercials movie. from the 80s. You could point yeah. to things like, oh, that was from the commercial or yeah. whatever, you know? I mean, we're just in a time warp. And I, again, I think it's people have- time loop. Time loop. I feel like- you know, people have forgotten how to make new things. Now we're seeing new things. We're seeing great new things come out of like Japan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, we watched Demon Slayer and we're completely blown away by that. Uh, it was great. Um, but yeah, America just it's and again, I think it's just that attitude. We don't want to we don't want to take a chance. We don't want to make something new. We just want to take something somebody else has done or our, our, our uh, older brothers and sisters hand me downs mm -hmm. and say they're ours. Right. And that's what makes me so mad. And then and then they do it and they do it in such a way that they, they bastardize it. And then anybody who says, wait a minute, that's not the show. Uh, they put their fingers in the ears, start going, ah, you, you misogynist, racist, sexist, homophobic, trollish, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's what they do. That's what they do. They don't want to. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to be. They don't want to be creative. They want something handed to them so they could ride the wave on top to build nothing, appropriate everything, and then when anybody questions it, there's obviously something problematic with them. Maybe not because it can't be their version of what they did. How about if you're so talented and if you're so effing great, you just make something new? Yeah. Again, you know, Rebecca Sugar did a lot of animators, adult animation. Uh, we're seeing it. They're making new stuff mm -hmm. successfully, but it seems like. Everybody keeps coming back to the popular IP, the kids shows, and they all want to take their own personal rinse on dump it. Dump on it, 
And um, then they're they're all like, oh, golly, the, the fans don't like it. Oh, they're just a bunch of haters. Right. You know? There's a reason why these properties still remain popular to this day. And it's because of the fans that you like to mock all the time who kept it going. And quite frankly, the comic did okay, but it really wasn't a big seller. Yeah. And when the movie, when they tried to reboot the movie, they made too many damn changes to it. I mean, Synergy is not an Eve looking robot from Wally, -E, And they made so many damn changes to it that people hated it. They pulled it out of the theater after like a week or two. Now, I'm not saying that they would, you know, they went the cartoon route with this, but let's talk about. Well, you know what's it going to be? Hmm. Because they didn't use the LGBTQ thing as a shield, which is what these would be used. Yeah. They didn't tell people they were problematic, sexist trolls for not liking the movie. Yeah. Well, they're talking about the LGBTQ angle in uh, Gem. The one they inserted into it for the comics. Yeah, in the mm -hmm. comics. Now, you know, a couple things here. One, um, Susan Blue actually who voiced Stormer is gay. You know, again, this is a case of like, people keep thinking this is like, you know, just there were no gay people working in Hollywood. Oh yeah, I'm so tired of hearing that. No load. gay people it's working insulting in- insulting to those people. Yeah, no gay people working in animation. Uh, no, actually, but it was oh, like- Oh, by the way, you're my favorite character. Yeah, Stormer's- Stormer awesome. was always my favorite character. She was RC in Transformers too. Yeah, well, I like you. She's been kind of a, a, a voice talent scout in the animation industry for years. Very, very well respected. Uh, professional but again it's an, another one of these narratives that like it's you know we just there were never any gay people working in animation they've been there for They've been there. you're insulting these people these are the actual these were the true pioneers and you're insulting them all the time yep and we won't stand for it yep and a lot of them are really awesome people we won't stand for a lot of these voice actors being trashed uh classic voice actors who have been working in this industry for decades uh you don't have to necessarily like the show but if you're you know, if it's good enough, I guess, to use the name, if it's good enough to promote your own career, you should at least show them some courtesy, which is the biggest problem we had with uh, Netflix Shira was well, there that, was no And then courtesy. the way they treat courtesy towards the fans, yeah, too. Yeah, it was, it was bad. I mean, they were really, the marketing people were atrocious. But yeah, just to bring up um, the gem series from IDW. Again, I like Sophie Campbell's art. I've always liked Sophie Campbell's he art. He has. He has mentioned it many times. Yeah, well, I think she's doing Ninja Turtles now. Well, it's on hiatus now. That's if IDW survives this year. I don't even know if IDW is going to. But back in 2015, when comics were selling better than they are now. Right. and premiere issues always sell the best, the first issue. You. Right. Gem and the Holograms number one did 29,000 copies, it which is still only what, eh. did it, what did it rank at that time? It was it was number 77 on the, the list. So it still wasn't great. By and the, that was the first issue. By the third issue, we were down to 135 and we're selling half as many 15,000 copies uh, by the 24th issue, 280. We're down to 5,000 copies. Yeah. And then by the time they canceled it, um, well, that was the annual. That was when it first came out. By the time they canceled it, we're talking, it settled in around 5,600 copies, which for IDW at that time was, yeah, it was okay. But I mean, for comics in general, it was not a very good number. No. And when you've got other, like, Archangel selling better, you've got, you know, G.I. Joe selling better. And G.I. Joe had been kind of dragged through the mud at this time, too. Steven Universe was selling better than Jim. Well, Steven Universe is, like I said, again, at least its own thing. Yeah. I mean, whether you like it or hate it, I'll give her credit because when they go on about representation, she did it first and she did it even in a, in a much harder way because she had to do it from scratch. She didn't yeah. just get to appropriate something and be like, look at me. Here I am for all of you representation. She did it. On her own, it was intended to be that way. I don't, I, I'll be honest, when they promoted Steven Universe, I don't think they even went with the the diversity angle. They're like, let's just put this show out there. And we saw, we saw, okay, fine. There's a lot of influence from anime and there's a lot of influence from video games. And, you know, kind of like, it was just kind of a mixture of all stuff that mm -hmm. I think she was a fan of. But I don't remember them being like, hey kids, watch the gayest new show on TV. Right. But that's what they were like with Shira. Yeah. And you, and, know? And you know, Rebecca Sugar didn't have a PR person go and, and slam the fandom and put her picture everywhere when she announced, that, when they announced that she was doing her show. No, no. You know, it's, 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 it's absolutely ridiculous. It's just, Completely ridiculous. But back to Jem for a minute. I want to talk about the one thing that used to annoy me the hell out of Jem. And they did address it in the comics, she said, was the Rio thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rio pissed me off because I don't care. I was a little kid and I still thought he was a dick because Rio didn't know. Now she should have told him, but even so, he was trying, he was messing with Jerrica and Jem not knowing it was the same person. And it was really, 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 I was even like, whoa, dude. Whoa. What the heck's wrong with you? So they have an issue of Superman where Lois Lane nails Clark Kent and then nails Superman. 
Do they really? No, that'd be kind of funny. That'd be funny, though. But I'm just like, I was like, you know, what the heck, dude? Now, I guess in the comic, you said that he found out and was all mad at her for lying. But at the same time. Yeah, the comic, I guess that he had his, his day of reckoning. Yeah. yeah. But you know what, though? He's still a dick. She should have told him by all means. But he's still a dick because he thought he was, he was two time on both, not realizing. And he actually did. Like, literally two time them both. Yeah. Um, without realizing he was the same person. And I'm like, what kind of a person are you, Chicky Poo, that you're so okay with it that you're going to let. Your your man two time you even though it's with yourself. I'm like I was like what's wrong with you? Why don't you just tell him he's a dick? And um, I gotta tell you a secret, um, Neon. Uh, my real name isn't Geeky Sparkles. <sighs> She's got these earrings. <laughs> so I'm just I'm you just know. I'm just saying. Yeah. But um, anyway, I'm just I just I just had it. This I'm the, I didn't grow up with it, but I'm a fan because I have the Funko Pops. My opinion should matter more. I wa- I was there. Born in 90, God, born in 92, I'm sitting there thinking, like, how old am I? Uh, but mm-hmm. no, I'm like, I love this. It's, it's sort of like, I almost feel... the same decade as Jim. I feel, yeah. yeah, I feel like it's almost like, um, it's like fetishizing the 1980s. And that's why I feel like a lot uh, it of... It is, like, very much so. Like, a lot of these younger creators are like, oh my God, the 80s were so cool, but you weren't there. You, you don't understand. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't be a fan of 80s pop culture if you weren't there, but I'm saying... There was there was something in the air. There's something in the the, the zeitgeist. It's something that, that made these shows the way yes. they are, and you're lacking it. You're lacking it. You're looking at the surface. You're what you're seeing when you look at these shows, and you look at the movies or whatever, and you're trying to crawl in. Is you're seeing the end result? You know, you're seeing the paint on the house, but you don't understand how the house is actually built. And how the paint got on there. And, how, and, right. and then you keep, and I, and I love how they keep going on about how much they love these properties from the 80s, but then they have to change anything about them because they're the one dimensional and shit. It's like, you know what? If you don't, if you can't, if you can't respect it for what it is, you have no right to make changes to it. Yeah. Like, oh, I love this, this idea. So, okay. Here's, here's a crazy, crazy thought. Why can't you take inspiration from shows from the 1980s, but then go do something else? Because that's hard. Yeah, because it doesn't have the brand recognition. It doesn't have the built-in audience, but you're not going to have the built-in audience anyway. When you piss them off, they're not going to stick around. As much as they try to argue that, oh, no, that there's lots of people that are interested in it. No, it's just a vocal minority who keep, you know, retweeting it over and over again to try to make it trending. Yeah, right. I mean, th- they, yeah, if, it was, if it was the majority, they wouldn't be focusing on classics all the stinking time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I, you know, here's the thing. I, we don't even know because Netflix is very, um, you know, they don't really broadcast their numbers. You have to guess. But I don't think that uh, She-Ra did all that well. I think She-Ra had a very limited audience. Um, it, they made a big kind of to-do about it when it first started, but then it just kind of settled into the Tumblr crowd mm-hmm. watching it. I don't think it was doing that well. We'll never know. But it's hard to go by their numbers anyway because their seasons are so all over the place on yeah. numbers. I mean, some of them had just a handful and some had like 13. It right. was like it, there was no consistency to it at all. Yeah. I it mean, was just what the heck. Like we can get some, sometimes they'll crow about the numbers. They'll be like, oh, okay, this, this movie got 25 million views or whatever. But I think when you get down to it, it's like, I don't think she did that well. Um, they were talking, uh, you know, we saw before that they put the dolls on clearance. Now they go for a small fortune now because. No, they not really. That was us on Amazon. On Amazon. Other places. Everything they're not, goes they're not that Amazon. valuable. But I've, I've seen people send us pictures where they were marked down to like three bucks. Yep. You know? And uh, there, it does have a very... Um, that was within a few months of them releasing it. Right. It wasn't like, you know, it had been out for like a year or two until they clearance it out. We're talking like, just like, they put it on the shelves and a few, like three or four months later, they yeah. started they start clearing them out because no one bought them. Because it wasn't targeted for kids. I mean, that's the thing. Their audience, this is kind of what happened with Steven Universe too. I, I would say Steven Universe though has more children watching it because it's on Cartoon Network. But Shira, like what happened was it was basically, it was a show by Tumblr, for Tumblr well, she, and those people don't buy toys. Said, ma- repeatedly, she made a show that she was she had seen. Right. She made a show for herself. She said so. She has said so in interviews. And that's exactly what she got, was she got a show, she put a show out there that's for herself and, and people who are on the same wavelength, um, a lot of them from Tumblr, and that's what happened. But I mean, when people think of Shira 10 years from now. Uh, Even most, now, most people think of this Shira. Well, I think Mattel is starting to learn. Now, there's some weirdness going on with Masters of the Universe because they have not one but two shows coming up. And Mattel is taking the reins again. I don't think 
uh, DreamWorks is going to be involved in She-Ra much more. I mean, th could they do a, a She-Ra movie if the financial incentive was there? But I think DreamWorks is even like, yeah, I don't, we really don't know if we're going to make any money on this. I also appreciate the art from the, the, the She-Ra box that they used to use and stuff and how beautiful it is. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, yeah, they used to fight over Bo, actually, in the comics. Nuh -uh, uh uh because, you know, but Bo, but the, the joke was everybody knew Bo was gay. Yeah. It was kind of like the joke. Um, so, you know, anyway, I'm just saying, just, if you want to make new things, make new things. If you want to take stuff and be inspired by them, by all means, do so. But stop taking all the shows that existed back in the 80s and taking a giant steaming pile of crap on them and then telling everybody else you're supposed to like it because you said so. Come on, come up with some originality, you know? I know it's harder, but grow a backbone and do something harder. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's, it is hard. And, but I think this generation, maybe not this generation, but I think Zoomers, I have a lot of hope for them that they're actually going to be the ones who go back to uh, innovating again. Mm -hmm. Because again, these shows were created by people who grew up in the 40s, 50s, right. 60s. The boomers that y'all want to bitch about. The boomers you bitch about. Gem, Gem was created by boomers. Shiro was created by boomers. You know, but and it was consumed about. by Generation Xers that no one talks about. Yeah, nobody talks about. And Gen Xers, as you'll find out, have zero Fs to give about your opinions or feelings. Because <laughs> nobody cared about us, so we don't right. give a shit about you. Um, so that's that's why we're gonna we're gonna be left. We were more adult at twelve than these people are in their twenties. Oh, oh God, yeah. Anyway, um, do we want to wrap this one up? Yep. All right. I, oh, this is good. Somebody actually brought this up. I was surprised. Uh, she was going on about how Hasbro and Sunbro and Marvel Productions. Does that mean gems in the MCU? It's like, no, uh, dumbass. Hasbro, Sunbro, Marvel means they're part of the G.I. Joe and Transformers shared universe. Yeah, actually, all the Hasbro shows were connected. And um, it was because they had the, the guy on TV. Forget his name off the top of my head, but they had a newscaster. He was a parody of Geraldo Rivera, and he was on. I, he might have been on Gem, too, but he was on like all of the shows. So technically, Gem, uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Inhumanoids, uh, they all existed supposedly in the same shared universe, but they never actually crossed them over on TV. So that was kind of a, they were like yeah. their own little pocket universe. Now, was he, you're expecting them to know that? Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, you're expecting these people to know that. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh -huh. I, I wouldn't either, would because that watch, would be... You'd well, have to watch all the shows. Well, that would have to mean that you actually, you know, cared about things other than using the name for appropriation purposes. Yeah, so um, I don't think this is going to happen. I think there will be a reboot of Gem someday, but I don't... I don't. They tried it once in the film, and it, it failed miserably. It, it might be a case of it failed so badly that they will never go back to that again. And if and they that, do, they're going to try to stick closer to what the show was supposed to be, because they made changes and people hated it. Hey, 80s nostalgia is huge. I'm telling you, the only way you really can pull Gem off, because uh, Gem and the Holograms were basically a girl band, like the Go-Go's, which actually have a, they have a new uh, Showtime documentary on the Go-Go's. Oh, do they really? Yeah, they just I just saw a trailer for it. Yeah, it looks really good. But they were so much a product of their time. They were basically, you know, Barbie dolls for the MTV generation. And they had Barbie and the Rockers. I know, they mentioned the articles too, which I had those as well, the Barbie and the Rockers. I had that stuff too. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you almost have to have this take place in the 1980s for it know, to be yeah other people to, brought that up in the work. comments they said that, that in today's uh, music world uh, something like this wouldn't really work no they tried um, to make her a youtube thing in the movie and it's like, it didn't no, work it didn't because work. you know like you said nostalgia is big nostalgia meaning you know, you, you remember things from the past you grew up with it it it, 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 it resonates with you which wouldn't be these people to begin with because yeah. they have no they have no connection to it other than they want to use a name and make it their way they don't care they didn't watch it matter you know they might watch it now but they don't have the connection to it the people that grew up with it do um and nostalgia usually only works when it's actually something that you're nostalgic for when you go change it piss all over and tell everybody that it was you know fans of the original there's something wrong with them that doesn't actually work for you with nostalgia yeah i would i would say make a make a fanfic and put it on deviant art because there you go that's going to be probably more successful or make a show that that you might take loose inspiration from no. but has nothing to do with the with the original one and there you go Build right. it from scratch, do the work, show some innovation and originality. But stop rebooting the 80s. Just stop it. Because it has a built-in fan base. Oh, God, not, not the way you guys. You're going to insult. Yeah. Hey, if you can, they can drive away Star Wars fans. They can drive away just about mm -hmm. anybody. So, all right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe 
ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.